Good evening. Welcome to this streaming mass celebrated jointly by the Church of St. Mary and the parish of St. John the Evangelist and St. Joseph as we celebrate Holy Thursday. Father Ken Doyle is our celebrant and Father Tom Kanapka is our concelebrant. Deacon Al Sulo will be assisting. Singing will be led by Kayla Herringer and John Rodier, accompanied by Carl Hacker and Edie Silva, and myself, Dawn Gillen Lecter. We are happy to have you join us today and welcome all who are participating online. A worship aid is available on the church websites. Please continue to wear your mask while singing along quietly with the cantor. When it is time for communion, the ushers will show you when to go forward. You may also receive communion in, in the parking lot at St. Mary's on Easter Sunday from 12.15 to 1.15 p.m. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection. Let us call to mind our personal intentions and prepare to worship God in this liturgy. Please rise and join in singing, Lift High the Cross. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And be with, with your spirit. spirit. We gather this evening to commemorate that sacred night when Jesus, on the night before he died, gathered his closest friends and talked to them about his love for them. He gave them a gift that night, a gift that sustains us even through today the gift of the Eucharist. We take a moment to quiet our hearts and place ourselves consciously in the presence of God, and we thank God for that gift of the Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, we have completed our Lenten observance, and now we have begun the solemn celebration of the Easter feast. On these great days, it is our duty to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have salvation, life and resurrection. These oils that we have with us tonight were blessed and consecrated at the Chrism Mass by Edward our Bishop for use throughout the coming year. With them, the sick will be anointed, those awaiting the waters of rebirth will be strengthened, and those who are baptized and confirmed will share the mission of Christ, the Anointed One. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit who fills these holy oils with life and grace, the saving work of Christ is continued within his church. 
Behold, the oil of the sick, receive God's grace and healing. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Behold, the oil of catechumen, receive God's strength and wisdom. Behold the sacred chrism, give thanks, O priestly people. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Let us sing the praises of the God who made us, to whose glory is from age to age. pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, 
This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow shall come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, 
fully aware that the Father had put everything in his, into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that I, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When a man is about to die, there are certain ways in which he typically acts. He may gather his family and his closest friends and tell them of his love. Perhaps he speaks to them about the values that he would like them to carry on. He might give them something to keep his memory alive, a photo perhaps, or a favorite book. Jesus followed that same pattern. As tonight's epistle and gospel readings recount, on the evening of the Last Supper, Jesus gathers those who mean the most to him, the apostles, Martha and Mary perhaps, and their brother Lazarus, almost certainly his mother Mary. He speaks to them of the ideals that he would like them to cherish going forward, love for each other and service. He even shows them by washing from the apostles' sandaled feet the dust of the roadways. In that simple action of washing the feet of his friends, Jesus shows what his life and his ministry have been about. And then he gives them a gift to keep their thoughts of him alive. This is not to be their last supper, but a first. They are to come together again and again to share that meal. The food for that meal will be unique, his own flesh and blood, his very life to mingle with their own, helping them to live and to love as he did. And tonight, 20 centuries later, a breathtaking event takes place across this small planet. Jesus Christ, wrapped in a piece of baked bread, hiding all that is divine within him, pillows himself on the tongue of a Russian miner and in the palm of an Irish maid, touches the flesh of a farmer from the Philippines and a French financier, graces the stone altar of a Polish cathedral 
and the crude wood of a chapel in Peru. Comes to the tune of organ music in a Baltimore basilica and in the stillness of a hospital bed in Phoenix. From the rising of the sun to its setting, from one pole of this globe to the other, a priest holds a host before eyes that are wrapped in adoration. This is the Lamb of God, he tells them. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. And the whole earth rings out with one changeless response. Lord, I am not worthy. We are not worthy, and yet it happens. And tonight you may, if you are blessed, feel that same presence within you. Sense in this Eucharist a meeting and a conversation with the risen Jesus as the lover of your soul. Beyond that, there's little for me to say. Tonight's feast, I believe, is not a time for preaching. It is instead a time for feeling, a time to be overtaken with wonder at the gift of the Eucharist and the power and peace that it brings. Let us pray. The example of Jesus who washed his disciples' feet shows us how to serve others in our deeds and in our prayers. Our response will be, crucified, Lord, hear our prayer. That bishops, priests, and all religious would be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to serve God's people in holiness, love, and joy, we pray to the Lord. Crucified, true Lord, hear our prayer. That nations throughout the earth Renew their commitment to peace and justice and religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer. That communities find ways to heal disagreements and divisions with honesty and respect for one another. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer. That those who seek the Easter sacraments during these holiest of days would embrace the cost of discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer that the number of men consecrated to the priesthood would grow, providing a major increase in vocations. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer. That as we are nourished at this Eucharistic feast, we remember the hungry and the homeless throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Crucified and Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick would feel God's tender love and concern, especially those listed in the parish bulletins. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer. That all priests of the diocese, living and deceased, would walk in the presence of the living Christ. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in Christ, those listed in our parish book of intentions, and especially for those of our communities, pro popolo, remembering their faithfulness. May they find eternal life in Christ, who said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We pray to the Lord. Crucified Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, source of the bread we offer, hear and grant the prayers we bring to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God and blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, the orders of bishops, priests, and deacons, those in pastoral leadership, the religious, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Son, we see him 
for the sake of ease, we're not going to split up in sides. We'll just recite the psalm together um, just as one whole community. Please stand. O oh God, come to my assistance. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As we come to the end of this day, let us take a few moments to reflect upon how we have met our God and ask forgiveness for those things that we need forgiveness for. Kirelesson, Kristelesson, Kirelesson. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. If we die with the Lord, we shall live with the Lord. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. If we endure with the Lord, we shall reign with the Lord. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. Please be seated. For our sake, Christ was obedient, accepting even death. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. It is he who will free you from the snares of the fowler who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the plague that prowls in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand fall at your right. You it will never approach. His faithfulness is buckler and shield. Your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. You who have said, Lord, my refuge, and have made the Most High your dwelling. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach where you dwell. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and trample the young lion and the dragon. Since he clings to me in love, I will free him, protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls, I shall answer, I am with you. I will save him in distress and give him glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For our sake, Christ was obedient, accepting even death. A reading from the book of Revelation. They shall see him face to face and bear his name, 
on their foreheads. The night shall be no more. They will need no light from lamps or the sun. For the Lord God shall give them light, and they shall reign forever. For our sake, Christ was obedient, accepting even death. Please stand. There's one line in the canticle of, of Simeon that we don't need. It's after, it's at the end before the antiphon. Has he not made you and established you? Just leave that line out. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ and asleep rest in his peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ and to sleep, rest in his peace. Let us pray. Lord, we beg you to visit this holy house and banish from it all the deadly power of the evil. May your holy angels dwell with us to keep us safe, and may your blessing be upon us always. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May the Lord grant us a restful night and one day a peaceful death. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, Show unto us the fruit, fruit, blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, 